Yeah, I mean, um, it's we're obviously excited. Um, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating this team. Um, it's it's a long journey. It, it's it's a fun journey. Uh, right now, we're in the building stages. It's trying to get better. Um, I, I think we're very talented. I don't know exactly, you know, all our strengths right now. And uh, I think we're a very deep team. So um, it's always fun. You know, the weather's getting colder, leaves are changing, um, and basketball's coming. So, you know, our guys are excited because it's going to be here pretty soon. Yeah. I mean, obviously last year a few injuries kind of hurt you significantly in certain spots mm -hmm. and, and just talking with Jason before like it seems like you've got multiple guys in multiple spots right now do you feel like you're more more prepared for whatever comes this season yeah I mean the, the thing that every season is unpredictable and you go on winning streaks and you, you go through adversity and you know you want to be built for the adversity and uh, you know last year we faced a lot of it and you know, looking back, I think we lost our identity. And um, some of it was personnel-driven. You know, we lost some personnel. But no matter what this year, I want to maintain our identity. And for, for the year and a half I was, you know, here, my first year and a half, I thought we were there. And then the last six weeks of the season, we lost our identity. So whether it's injuries, whether it's road trips, whether it's tough losses, you know, I just want to make sure that we stay true to who we are. You know, kind of going off that a little bit, I know last year, like with the adversity, it was, you know, 17 games decided by 10 or fewer points, some went one way, some went the other. Do you feel like that maybe developed some resiliency with the guys coming back? Is that something maybe you've noticed in practice? Yeah, I've noticed, um, you know, our guys are mentally tougher. And, um, you know, some a huge benefit to us this year is I have a lot of guys that have been here three years with me. And, and, and a lot of guys have been here two years. So... You know, the tendency for us right now in practice is kind of skip steps because these guys already know it. But there is a familiarity. There, there's, there's a comfort um, with the returning guys. And um, that's going to help us. You know, they don't have to overthink things. They can play. I've already noticed we can make adjustments earlier than, than we ever have before just because these guys are, are you know, they're, they're smarter, more experienced. They've been through a lot, you know, and with all those experiences comes growth and they've grown a lot too. And then is resiliency like a trait that you can maybe see in recruits when you're out on the recruiting trail, or is that something that you feel like develops during their time in the program? Yeah, there's always certain things we look for in, re in recruiting. And, um, you know, the things that jump off is obviously when somebody's athletic and, and their size. But then we get past that, and then we look at that, but then we get past and we, and we look for, for toughness, competitiveness. Um, I feel like those guys are everyday guys. Um, I don't think I've ever made a mistake on a recruit that was tough. And uh, those guys have always been contribute to winning. And then, you know, the way we play and we play fast, we like guys to be, you know, be able to process information quickly and have a, a basketball IQ. And so when they're able to do that, they're able to read and react and, and, and play fast and still make good decisions. What about this team makes you excited to go back to the Sun Belt this year and face some of your, face some of your former, former programs? Yeah, I think just bringing back experience, um, but but also our newcomers. Um, you know, I think they really kind of fill in some gaps that maybe were lacking last year. Um, you know, Mezio Forum is um, you know going to be one of the best defensive players in the league. He can guard all positions, uh, tremendous size, um, just an unbelievable attitude. He, he's an everyday person, and uh, you know, Noah Fredell is um, already had huge moments in college and huge games in college. And, you know, he's rounding himself into shape and, and, and getting himself familiar, but um, he's obviously talented. And the three freshmen, um, you know, I think they, they bring in that toughness. You know, they bring in competitiveness, and, and they're all very talented. So just adding those group with the familiarity with the older guys, I think just kind of gives us, you know, an air of confidence about us. Um, you know, I think it is a confident group. And I don't think it's a group also that's kind of scared of challenges either. And, you know, I think they want the challenge of going into the Sun Belt. They want the challenge of some of our non-conference games. Uh, they embrace that. And then kind of going off of that, um, what about your personal experience from a coaching standpoint kind of makes this transition into a new conference where you've faced a lot of these programs and seen some of these coaches before in regards to prepping this team for some of the experiences that they're going to face this season? Yeah, I, I think as a coach every year I reflect back in, in the, the previous season and, and kind of looking back and like what I thought I could have done better and, and what we did right. You know, it's kind of a self-evaluation. And, 
you know, kind of what I did this, you know, no more going into the Sun Belt is kind of thinking back, you know, how it is to navigate through that league. And um, the, the, the travel's challenging. And the, the athleticism in the league is, is very good. And it, 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 you're going to run into teams that just have, you know, guys who are extremely quick twitch and can really jump and run fast. And um, so thinking about what the adjustment we're going to have to make going against that. So um, I've always reflected and kind of in, in making sure that, that I'm getting better every year as a coach and did that. But then also I looked back a little bit further and said, all right, what did I learn my Sun Belt days to be able to help me in the league? So um, we're a ways away from that. You know, I've, I've thought about it and in some of the things. We don't hit that till the end of December. And, you know, but that'll be something that would definitely be addressed by the time we get there. Um, going off of Maddie's question, I just want to ask specifically about Georgia Southern because, you know, you spent seven seasons there. You really kind of helped build that program. Like, what are your sort of just thoughts and just general feelings about – you know, in the future, having to sort of face that team. Yeah, you know, as you get older in coaching, you kind of run into a lot of different things um, that, you know, you see them on the, on the schedule and you're like, oh, you know, there's that game. And, you know, it's it, it always has a something a little bit more because there's more friends. But, you know, last year I had to go back and play against my alma mater. Um, you know, that was, that was something that um, – you know, I'm going back to Virginia this year and playing there where I, I worked at Virginia. Um, I, last year I was going to College of Charleston and uh, I was at College of Charleston for nine years. So it, it, it's just, you know, one of those things where um, when you've been around long enough, which is a good thing, you're going to kind of run into some places that you've been before and people you know. But, um, um, you know, I like the fact that Terrell Strickland's going to go against his brother. I think that's cool. And uh, it's always some memorable things. And then kind of just stay on that topic a little bit, you know, you kind of have, it's a similar th situation with Alonzo because of he spent a couple seasons with uh, Texas State. Have you kind of talked to him a little bit about that and just sort of gotten his feelings on that at all? You know, when we found out we were going to the Sun Belt, um, was actually probably pretty close to a year from now, right? Uh, I know it was like a week before the season. I remember talking to the team and, and, and kind of sharing that news with them. Uh, Alonzo is one of the first people I talked to. And, um, and he was just smiling, and he's got an infectious personality. He goes, well, we're going back, huh? And um, so he embraces it. Uh, the point guard on Texas State's one of his best friends, one of the best players in the league. Um, he's going to have friends there. And 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 I know how it is. It, it's When you play friends and you play stuff, it's almost like playing your brother. You want to beat him worse. And um, you go after it harder and everything else. So he'll be juiced for that game. And uh, they're one of the best teams in the league, which makes it you know a fun challenge. So as you start another year here at Jamie, you've got some established players on the team, one of those players being Votto. Could you just kind of talk about what he means as a, you know, on and off the court and um, another part of why you think he's such an effective scorer for being a smaller guard? Yeah, I mean, Votto's obviously, you know, had, had great moments here in, in two years. And, um, you know, there's another level that he can step and get to. And, you know, it's, it, it's a maturity in seeing the game and, and, and being what we need at that moment. And, you know, there's times where he's got to be able to get other guys involved, be able to be a leader, be able to make the big shot, make the free throw, do these different things. And he's got to be able to embrace the fact that that's going to be put on him. And, and he wants that. What I've noticed in our uh, kind of official practices the last couple of weeks is he has a different level of, mat level of maturity about him now. Um, he's, he's more every day. He, he's, he's more into his teammates. He's fixing them, helping them. And truthfully, when he's doing that, he's making himself better too. So um, we're going to put a lot on him this year, and, and he wants that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Terrell's an athletic big with good hands. And one of the adjustments that freshmen come into college is the game moves so fast. I mean, the defensive concepts are, are much more challenging than in high school, and you're going against bigger, stronger guys. And what I've noticed the last two weeks is every single day he's getting better and better. And um, I don't want to put an expectation or a limit on him this year on where he can contribute to the team because he's taken huge jumps in the last two weeks. 
And, you know, it, if he keeps on doing that, it's going to be exciting to see where he is in December or January. But uh, he's got a great attitude. He's very smart. Um, he has a lot of natural ability. And uh, if he just keeps growing day to day, I mean, I know he's going to be a good player for us a career, but I think he's going to be able to help us this year. Yeah, he's gotten much more physical, and um, he's been able to brace the contact. I mean, he goes against guys every day that that just try to bully him. And uh, with, with Mezzi and, and, and Justin Amati and Alonzo Sule, I mean, those guys are physical guys, and they're pushing on him and, and hitting him. And, and what he's learned is not back down. And, and it, it's, got, it's got to be a physical game. Um, and he picks up things really quickly. And, and, and so one of the big, best things he has is – it's just his IQ of being able to make a mistake and learn from it and go on to be able to you know, process it and not make the mistake again. And you're talking about him and Mezzi both coming in here. Have you had a team that was as deep at the big spot as this one? I mean, it seems like you've got four or five guys who can play the four and five. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times my teams, we've played a smaller four. And um, Julian Wooden's kind of been an exception um, because he has great size. But um, what I like about, you know, the fours we have, and, and, and that's Mezzi and Julian and, and sometimes Terrence Edwards or Talk if we do go small, but uh, those guys can really move, and they can guard multiple positions. They're multi-dynamic guys. They can do different things on the court. They can shoot it. They can drive it. They can make plays. But then you kind of get to our bigs, and our bigs are extremely mobile. Um, you know, Justin Amati is as fast, as quick as any big guy, you know, in, you know, in the country, and he uses that. And then Alonzo Sule. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, I know we're taller. You know, I know you can see that when you added Jarrell and you added some of these guys and Mezzi, we're taller. But I think the bigger thing is, you know, we're a much stronger team than we were last year. And our, and our, our strength coach has done a really good job of putting on functional muscle on our guys. We wore down last year. And um, hopefully this prevents us from injuries and, and things like that. So it's not always about the size, sometimes it's about the physicality. And I do like the fact that our bigs this year are much more physical and their bodies are able to handle kind of more physical game. Maybe especially with a team like yours, who starts is a little bit overrated, but you can only put five guys on the floor at a time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be somebody who's either been you know a three-year starter or all-conference somewhere. Something's probably not going to be in the starting lineup. Are your guys – able to, I mean is everybody kind of like on board with you know how the minutes are going to be distributed and things like that yeah I mean right now I got 13 guys I think they're going to start and um that's got to be you know my my challenge as a coach and 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 their challenge as a team is is understanding you know the sacrifice you know for the greater good of the team and um you know we're going to have guys who that aren't starting all right that are going to play more minutes than starters um you know, we're, it's probably going to be some some lineups that are going to change throughout the year. Uh, we're not going to have a set five, and, and I know that right now. And um, that's going to change, not just because of injury or illness or whatever else, but um, I think we're going to have multiple lineups that are going to be able to adjust and give us the best chance to win. And there's going to be a lot of times the groups that start aren't going to be the groups that finish. And um, so we'll build upon that. But it is going to be a challenge, you know, that we got to maintain chemistry and sacrifice throughout the season when some people might know they can do certain things and might not get the opportunity yet. And their opportunity might come later on. TJ, you got something back? Yeah, there? I got I one for you. you. Um, I'm actually going to ask you about one of your walk-ons. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dylan Hamrick, local kid from the Valley. How did he become part of the team? What does he do for you? I mean, just can you talk about him a little bit? Yeah, Dylan kind of helped us with practice last year. And um, he's, uh, you know, he, he's learning the college basketball game. Uh, he played for a good friend of mine um, um, that we were actually on a men's league team together. And we brought him on as a manager and then kind of moved him back and forth. And, and, um, He's trying to figure out his way. He's made a lot of improvement um, from from last year to this year, and 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 the walk ons roles, um, you know, isn't exactly to play. Um, they're to get the other guys ready. Um, they're great for chemistry. Um, they they do a good job, like in, in the locker room and being ready for for their moment for helping the guys pair up. And and so that's what he's able to do now. He's able. He's gotten better, which helps our other guys get better. 
How nice is it going into the season not having to deal with a conference ban or COVID every day? <laughs> Well, um, the conference ban, I'm, I'm agree on that one. The COVID, who knows? I mean, that's um, – but I, I've had enough challenges in my first two years here, I think, for about 10 years. And, and um, you know, some of the things that we went through, you know, last year, truthfully, the hardest thing I've went through since I've been here has been the conference ban. And uh, harder than anything else. And, um, you know, college basketball – College basketball is built up for their conference tournament. And, and there is a reason that CBS pays whatever they pay, a billion dollars for that tournament. I think it's the greatest basketball event. I'm a little bit prejudiced, but I think it's the best basketball event in the world. And um, right now, that's what we're building for. You know, we're building for that conference tournament down in Pensacola. And, you know, we talk about it and, you know, we don't stay on it, but we're building up for it. And that was the toughest challenge I've had. And, and now this year's team is we're trying to build momentum to be playing our best basketball by that point towards the end. And um, it's nice this year that we can kind of stay and keep that as our goal, the end prize, and we don't have to worry about, you know, at the very end being an abrupt inning or, or kind of like what is our sacrifice for. So um, um, I'm glad it's over, truthfully. That, that, that was tough to deal with. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you.